This is Dr. Walters with a fairly ambitious podcast on the work of Karl Marx. I say ambitious because Karl Marx was extremely prolific and his philosophy or sociological approach is extraordinarily complex, rooted in a long European tradition. His most important works are the Economic and Philosophical Manuscripts of 1844, the Communist Manifesto 1848, and Das Kapital in 1867. But this is just a handful of the prolific work of Karl Marx in the 19th century. Many have said that other disciplines, including religion, biology, uh, philosophy, would would have fared much better had they had a thinker who devoted much of his life to sitting in the basement of the British Museum researching his ideas on social class and the impact of capitalism on human relationships. The key ideas in Karl Marx are dialectical materialism, alienation and reification, class conflict, and ideology. I cannot possibly hope to cover but a thumbnail of the work of Karl Marx, but I selected for your reading Eric Fromm's 1961 book, Marx's Concept of Man. While the assignment in the book is rather modest, I think once you get started reading this book, you will find it to be fascinating, and it is my hope that you will read it carefully, study it, and consider this as one of the possibilities for your final project. Eric Fromm wrote deeply in his interpretation of Marx and selectively in terms of the concepts and ideas he chose to elaborate on the uh, within the book. I'm going to add that I read this book myself as an undergraduate and was deeply influenced by the thinking put forward by Eric Fromm. Fromm identifies Marx's work as a protest against man, and here again the use of the term man is the generic man's alienation. The, the loss of self and the transformation of human beings into things that Marx perceived to be part of the ongoing social reality of the 19th century. Man was alienated from the process and from the products of his labor as a consequence of industrialization and the division of labor. A key idea in Marx, but also a topical heading and Fromm's interpretation of Marx is historical materialism. As Fromm points out, Marx means by materialism something different than materialistic. Man, bracketing the gendered language, is distinguished from other animals because he produces the means of his subsistence, and this comes to define that is his relationship to nature and the, the process of production, his activity or her activity defines the identity and the self for the human being. Man alters his natural history to produce his own human history in the process of production. Thus, labor is the mediating factor between man and nature. For Marx, the mode of production or the way in which that production takes place for material life conditions social and intellectual processes, really what we call consciousness. So for Marx, it is not consciousness that determines social being but rather social being that determines consciousness. 
for Marx, this leads to, or has as a corollary, the problem of consciousness and false consciousness. So for Sigmund Freud, the psychoanalyst, false consciousness is rooted in hidden libidinal strivings that are unconscious to him. For Marx, false consciousness is rooted in a social organization which directs the springboards of consciousness and blocks awareness or the vision of the full picture. Consciousness, thus for, for Marx, is a social product. And I, I quote here from Ludwig Feuerbach, who preceded Marx, but who provided a bridge figure between Marx and the long tradition or the long idealistic tradition from which he sprang and that tradition then privileged consciousness over social awareness and social existence as opposed to Marx who turned this whole idea on its head. Religion is the dream of the human mind, says Forbach, but even in dreams we do not find ourselves in emptiness or in heaven but on earth, in the realm of reality. We only see real things in the entrancing splendor of imagination and caprice, instead of in the simple daylight of reality and necessity. As Fromm articulates Marx's understanding of the nature of man, he brings forward many, many insights. Some of these are, are very romantic and have a very idealized understanding of human existence and human relationships. Nonetheless, key in the key in the work for Marx and for Fromm is the distinction between having something and being someone. Writes Fromm using Marx's philosophy, private property makes us stupid. An object is ours when we have it under the logic of private property, that is, when it's utilized. So for Marx, the science of capitalistic economy becomes truly a moral science. Uh, he, he defines this as a reversal of our understanding of renunciation and wealth. The renunciation of life and human needs, that is eating, going to the theater, painting, going to museums, allows you to save and acquire capital. So, but these are the things that make you a human being in the full sense of the term. So the less you are in the human sense of the term, meaning activities and imaginative activities, the more you have, because the more you're able to save, and, but the more you have, then the greater your alienation from life and from other human beings. Life and humanity are restored in money in the capitalist economy. A key idea and, and one in which on which I have asked you to focus this week in the readings is alienation. Alienation or estrangement means that man does not have an experience of himself or woman does not have an experience of herself as an active agent. Fromm claims this idea has first found its expression in the Old Testament concept of idolatry. Idols are the work of human hands. We create them, we project power onto them, and then worship them instead of experiencing ourselves as the creative people who created them. Idols themselves are dead and empty. I think here Fromm has a rather brilliant and at the same time simplistic uh, explanation of the concept of reification, and that is where we attribute life to something which is empty or dead or uh, material, not an organic or human thing. For Marx, the process of alienation is embedded in work and the division of labor. Human beings become, under the capitalistic system or under 
uh, the industrialized economy, alienated from the process and the products of labor. Key here is not on inequality, as many think of with Marx, but rather enslavement by things that are of our own uh, creation. Again, Fromm has a, a, a rather idealized version of Marx, but one, I think, that captures the human message in, in Marx rather than the class conflict message in Marx, which is also there, especially in, for example, the Communist Manifesto or later uh, in Das Kapital. But I think that you will find this interpretation of Marx in Marx's concept of man by Eric Fromm to be extremely interesting, valuable, and important reading. The Communist Manifesto is also available on the course site, uh, and I have taken from that one of the most famous quotes, the history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles, freeman and slave, patrician and plebeian, lord and serf, guild master and journeyman, in a word, oppressor and oppressed, stood in constant opposition to one another, carried on an uninterrupted, now hidden, now open fight, a fight that each time ended either in a revolutionary reconstitution of society at large or in the com common ruin of the contending classes.